Ouch. Check out this guy crash his beautiful scale airplane from a totally whack center of gravity. These accidents, unfortunately, occur quite often. Here in the Silviation Labs, we've been working hard to come up with a list of helpful habits to prevent these types of crashes. As a quick disclaimer though, Always remember that these habits are simply suggestions. They are not gospel, nor do we believe that we are gospel or some self-proclaimed messiah. Experience has always been the best teacher for us in the hobby, and our experiences have led us to form this list. Let's bounce right into it. Helpful habits for the new RC pilot. Let's start in the pits with some useful pre-flight habits. Personal limitations. Julian! Ever heard of them? We've noticed some folks haven't, so they attempt to fly their gorgeous scale jet with 20 mile an hour direct crosswinds and end up destroying it. Don't let your ego get the best of you. The best pilots don't fly when they know conditions aren't to their liking. Remember getting yelled at by your parents for not turning off the lights in your room? We're gonna put on that parent hat and remind you that your RC transmitter should be the first thing turned on and the last thing turned off on every flight. The fancy thing called failsafe should prevent your motor from spinning up in case you turn off your transmitter before your airplane, but experience has taught us not to rely on it. On that note though, make sure you do have a failsafe set up. We've found that most folks aren't even aware it exists, but it could prevent your plane from flying away and crashing into some poor bloke's house. Our next pre-flight habit is range checks. It never hurts to be 100% sure you've got a good signal to your receiver. That's quite big. Impressive. In the same way you always check your 5G hat as pinging ET. After range checks, a critical pre-flight habit is ensuring your server reversing is correct. Don't crash because your ailerons are going the wrong way. Some pre-flight advice that we really want to push is having insurance. Be sure to join the Academy of Model Aeronautics, also known as the AMA. It'll be worth it when all money and no skill Terry destroys his B-29 and crashes into a live crowd of people. Always good to be covered, folks. The next pre-flight habit applies before any flight, but more specifically on a scratch builder kit that you're about to fly for the first time. Always look over everything with a fine tooth comb. Full scale builders have an FAA inspector look over everything on their plane before they fly for the first time, so why shouldn't we do that with radio control models too? We've added a great checklist below in the description from the Merrymore RC Club out in Bremen, Washington. Look it over once this video is over. Be sure to have a nice set of tools for your inspection, by the way. We've all heard the saying, the right tool for the right job. Finally, we'd argue that the most crucial pre-flight habit is checking your center of gravity, also known as the CG. A proper CG is important, but don't get all bent out of shape about it. Most RC airplanes have very forgiving CG limits. We also wanted to stress that a tail-heavy airplane does not equal a bad idea, necessarily. Let's have a chat with our favorite not-armchair engineer, Real Deal Woody. Tell us, Woody, why should we not be totally goody-two-shoes about our CG? Check me out. If you're going to be doing a 1G cruise the whole time, you want that thing to be real stable. That means forward CG. If you want to yank and bank, you're going to be doing some 3D stuff. You're going to want that CG aft. There is a point where it goes too far aft and you'll be uncontrollable, but most RC airplanes are pretty forgiving because the recommended CG is pretty conservative, meaning forward. So you can experiment, and if it becomes too touchy, you can move the CG forward. So take center of gravity down off the pedestal. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be a goody two-shoes. Just be aware. Thanks, Woody. That's it for our pre-flight habits. Now that the pre-flight is done, let's start prepping the plane for taxiing to the runway. Our first pre-taxi habit we think is important applies to those folks with planes that have a real engine rather than a motor. Always use a starter, or the oddly named chicken stick, or if you must use your hand, definitely try and at least wear a glove. We personally have witnessed two people nearly lose their fingers due to not having proper protection around a spinning prop disc. Don't become Jerry Garcia. Our only other suggestions for the taxi out apply to propeller safety. If you're going to set up a new plane on the bench before going to fly it, take that prop off. You never know when it'll go live and blend your fingers better than your Nutribullet at home in the kitchen. Lastly, as with any gun addict, trigger safety is considered a second language at a firing range. In the same way, it should also be a second language at any RC field around propeller safety. Don't point your prop at anything other than open skies once she's live and prepped to taxi. Alrighty, we're about ready to depart good old Earth and grace the skies with your presence. Before you announce your takeoff, you announce the flight line. This is going to be my last flight. Nope. No, God! This is our first and only superstitious habit that we figured we'd mention. It's so well known in the RC community that you should really never utter the phrase, last flight. It'll guarantee you'll end up as a pile of Lincoln logs on the runway. Also, before taking off is the final place to have any opportunity to do a servo reversing check. So, you may as well do a quick one while you're waiting for touch and go Joe over there to clear the runway. Alright, now that Joe's airborne, let's jet into the skies with our best airborne RC habits. 
pinching versus thumbs. This is one that isn't discussed enough in our opinion. A wise RC pilot once pointed out to us that when you try and move your stick one millimeter with your thumb versus pinching, you'll notice that you can be much more precise with your pinch. Try it out. See the difference? Take or leave this one, but we hope you'll see new benefits if you try it out. Our next in-flight habit is flying three mistakes high. We've all seen the pilot who tries a new difficult maneuver too low to the ground and ends up destroying their plane from it. Avoid the ground in the same way you avoid talking about the weather on your first date. Onto our next in-flight habit, using the rudder. We feel it's critical to understand that the rudder isn't just there for steering on the ground. Avoiding skidding and uncoordinated turns will save you from that pesky base to final wing drop. Don't cheat and mix the rudder in with the ailerons on your transmitter. It's really important that you can use the rudder while flying by yourself and not with the help of the radio. We'll definitely go more in depth on this in a later video. The final habits we want to discuss around RC flight pertain specifically to performing a first flight on your brand new RC airplane. As with the saying, there's always a bigger fish. There's always a better pilot too. So why not have them standing by your side as a spotter and safety net for that first flight? Your first flight should have a flight plan as well. Here's an example of a flight plan we use for our first flights in five simple steps. Steps one and two, take off, get your airplane three mistakes high as your hands shake from the adrenaline and trim the airplane out. Step three, after the plane is trimmed, learn how it flies on the edge of its envelope. If your plane has flaps and retractable gear, or even if it's just a clean wing, do slow flight installs straight ahead with the gear and flaps up and down. Make gentle turns in these configurations. Step four, accelerated or high speed stall tests. Put around at a speed that's slow-ish, but still comfortably ahead of a critical angle of attack, and then smoothly, but abruptly, add full-up elevator. Try the same thing in a bank. Does the plane violently drop a wing, or does it just mush along? If the answer is mush, congratulations, you've got yourself a great airplane. We'll go more into proper stall recoveries in a later video, but just be sure you're ready when it bites. The fifth and final step is to set your flight timer conservatively. This will ensure that you have plenty of extra time to attempt some approaches, especially if landing your new plane gives you bad anxiety and nerves. The takeaway from these last few steps is that learning how the plane behaves at the edge of its envelope will make you more alert to any potential bad habits the plane may have when you get ready to slow her down for a landing. We do want to sneak in one last good habit to form on any flight. Fly the plane to the crash site. If you get flustered and feel like the airplane is flying you, as it probably would in Soviet Russia, Don't just throw the radio over your head and give up. Controlled crashes are much safer than uncontrolled crashes. That's it for our in-flight habit suggestions and our first flight flight plan tips. Let's cruise onward to good habits for setting up and performing your next landing. First, always make a stable approach. This could be an entire video in itself, but ensuring that your plane is completely configured to land, meaning your gear's down, if you have flaps, they're set, you're at a nice comfortable speed, and on a gentle and not Mount Everest steepness approach path, will virtually always guarantee that a great landing will follow your approach. This naturally leads to the next good habit, going around. There is a zero fault go around policy in all of aviation, full scale included. Going around proves that you have great decision making skills and like some of the best baseball players out there, not taking a swing at that bad pitch will save you from the walk of shame to your balled up airplane on the runway. Another great habit to form around landings is to simply do more landings. We've found from our own experiences and watching others that many folks are afraid of landing some airplanes in their fleet. For this reason, they will fly their plane right to the end of its battery life and then narrowly avoid disaster on landing as their hands shake violently from their nerves. Sure, any landing you can walk away from and reuse the airplane is a great landing, but why settle? Next time you're at the field, challenge yourself, snag your arch nemesis hard to land, and use all your battery life just doing approaches, landings, and touch and goes. You can get in a lot more landings this way and remove those nervous jitters. Challenging yourself is a great habit overall. Remember, you can always practice with a simulator at home as well. It's a lot less expensive to press a red reset button than buying a $500 airplane when you crash it. Still though, definitely challenge yourself if you can. That's it for great habits to form landing an RC airplane. Let's cover two more phases of flight and the helpful habits that work around them taxiing into the pits, and post-flight procedures. When taxiing in, the biggest habit we suggest you form lies in prop safety. When you're done taxiing, point your plane away from people or objects. The last thing anyone wants is a bump throttle causing a flyaway in the Grandma Jolene's chicken coop. When it comes to post-flight habits, start by ensuring safety around a prop and make it a habit to unplug your battery with the plane on the ground. This will reduce any risks around chopping your ears off Van Gogh style when you pick up your plane after you're done with your flight. Our final post-flight habit we suggest following is battery safety around lithium polymer or LiPo batteries. This is yet another topic we could go on about for hours, but to keep it simple in this video, do not leave your LiPos unattended when charging and store them safely in a LiPo safe bag or box. While it is rare, LiPos can become volatile and no one wants Grandma Jolene's chickens to turn into lithium flame-broiled Chick-fil-A sandwiches. In closing, we hope that you found these suggested habits helpful. 
feel free to use them as a starting point, but remember that they aren't written in stone. Different ideas on how to do things is what makes the world go around. As always, remember, everyone's shit smells the same. That's all we've got for this video. If you enjoyed it, we've got a pinch your transmitter and ask you to go ahead and hit the like button. Or, if you want to ensure a quality, stable approach, maybe even hit that subscribe button. Turn on alerts. We'll see you again next week with a new upload.